This is the brand new N4 dot files offering a stable and more polished desktop experience with a material expressive theme for Linux users. N4 is now based on QuickShow and the Hyperland window manager. It also introduces a brand new panel family, allowing you to choose between the standard layout or a Windows 11 style theme. In today's video, I will show you how to set up Arch Linux with the brand new N4.Foss. This guide will also work on most of the Arch based distributions like Endeavor OS, Cache OS, and much more. Now let's get started by installing n4.files on Arch. First, make sure you have a fresh installation of Arch Linux on your PC or laptop using the Arch install script. You can install Arch with either the GNOME or Plasma desktop environment or even start with no desktop environment. In my case, I have installed Arch Linux with Plasma Desktop and Windows 11 on the same drive in a dual boot setup. I have made a separate video showing the complete Arch Linux installation process, so I will leave a link to that video in the description. The first thing you should do after installing Arch Linux is to update your system. Open Terminal or Console and type this command to update everything. Next, it's recommended to install a few essential dependencies and fonts using pacman, make a hat and run this command to install git, wget, curl and other required packages. Before proceeding, install Timeshift, a backup tool that lets you create system snapshots. This backup will be useful if anything goes wrong for installing .foss. Now make sure you backup the entire root system and your home directory. Once everything is selected, click Create to take a snapshot of the system current state. It's time to set up the brand new N4 dot files with QuickShell and Hyperlint environment. Open your web browser and visit the official N4 website to learn more about the setup process. We will be installing the latest N4 dot files, which brings a beautiful material expressive theme to Hyperland. Then click on Quick Start. Now, as you can see, N4 supports Arch based distributions as well as other distros like Gentoo or Fedora. You can either use the online script to automate the installation or manually clone the repository and run the install script. I recommend the second option, which works great. Now go ahead and copy these commands one by one into the terminal. After running the setup file, the script will automatically detect your distribution. But simply press enter to continue, then enter your sudo password when prompted. Next, you will see a message that the new n4.files are powered by QuickShow and that EGS is no longer supported. But just press enter to proceed. You will also see a quick overview of what the script does. Just go ahead and press enter again to continue. Now keep in mind that this script doesn't install hardware drivers such as NVIDIA drivers. You will need to install them manually. In my case, I already installed the NVIDIA drivers while setting up Arch Linux, so I'm good to go. Then press enter to proceed. This script offers two installation modes. 
The first one prompts for confirmation before running each command. The second option runs everything automatically. I'm choosing the second option by tapping N and pressing Enter. Now sit back and be patient while the script is running in the background. You may be asked to enter your password a few times during the installation. It's also recommended to disable the screen lock to avoid any interruptions during the setup. Once the script is finished without any errors, I recommend checking out the post installation guide to get started with Hyperlint. Now let's install the media integration plugin for your web browser. Just go ahead and choose your web browser and install the plugin. It allows media thumbnails from your browser to appear in the top bar. If you are using minimal Arch installation without desktop environment, make sure to install a login manager like SDDM. And finally, once everything is complete, it's best to reboot your system to apply all the settings. Now from the login manager, just go ahead and click the top left corner and change the session to Hyperlint. This allows you to switch between Plasma and Hyperlint whenever you want. After selecting Hyperlint, enter your password to login. Now this is one of the most impressive Hyperlint setup you will ever experience. The first thing you should do after setting up the end for dot files is to connect to Wi-Fi. Open terminal by pressing super plus T, then type NMTUI and press enter to connect to your wireless network. Once it's done, you are good to go. Next, press super plus forward slash to open the shortcuts menu. The super key is the Windows key on your keyboard. This menu shows all the important key bindings including shortcuts for applications, wallpapers, workspaces, and much more. I recommend going through the list and memorizing a few shortcuts. For example, to close any app window, press super plus Q. Now let's increase the font size in the Kitty terminal. Open Terminal by pressing Super plus T. Inside your home directory, there's a hidden folder called config. There, all your Hyperlint configuration files are stored. Now first, navigate to the config directory using this following command. Then open the Kitty configuration file using any text editor and locate the font size setting. Then change the value to 20 and save the file. Next, close the terminal by pressing super plus Q, then reopen it with super plus D. You should now see the increased font size applied. Now to change or update a wallpaper, press super plus control plus T. This will open the file manager, allowing you to choose any wallpaper you like. Now by clicking the top left or top right corners of the screen opens the N4 panels. The right panel provides system controls such as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, performance modes and much more.
You can also access the on-screen keyboard, view notifications, check calendar information, create a to-do list, and start a timer whenever you need. And there's a dedicated button to reload Hyperlint instantly. And by clicking the power icon shows additional options like reboot, shutdown, and logout. Now let's open the settings shortcut. Now from here, you can switch between light or dark themes. The layout is inspired by Android's material expressive design, which means system automatically generates accent colors based on your wallpaper. Then under the bar settings, you can move the top bar to the left, right, or bottom of the screen. You can also add more shortcuts to the top bar and even configure workspaces to your liking. You can further customize QuickShow using interface settings by giving you even more control over the look and feel. The left panel lets you run your own locally installed AI models. If you have set up Olama on your system, you can access and use those models directly from here. Just go ahead and press Ctrl plus O to expand the chat window. Now simply choose the large language model you want to work with. For example, type forward slash model to select a model. As you can see, all locally installed Olama models are detected automatically. Next, go ahead and switch the tool mode to the search option. Now you can enter any prompt and receive a response just like magic. The end for dot files now lets you switch between different UI themes. By pressing Ctrl plus Super plus P, you can instantly switch to the Windows 11 style theme. If you ever get bored of the standard quick shell with Hyperlint and want something more minimal and familiar, this shortcut makes it very easy to switch between the default layout and the Windows 11 UI. This is honestly one of my favorite features of the new N4 Dotfoss. They have done a fantastic job over here. But just look at the app menu, workspace overview, and quick toggles. They clearly resemble Windows 11. And whenever you want to go back, simply press Ctrl plus Super plus P again to switch back to the standard quick shell environment. Now pressing the Super key opens the Workspaces overview along with the app launcher. This makes it incredibly easy to switch between workspaces. The built-in application launcher also lets you quickly search for any installed application, making it the fastest and more convenient way to launch applications on your system. If you want to edit the N4 configuration files, first open Kitty and navigate to the Hyperlint configuration directory. Now let's edit the default key binding configuration file using any text editor of your choice. 
As an example, we will add a custom key binding to launch the Chrome web browser. Now in this case, we will assign super plus shift plus G as the shortcut. Now once you have added the key binding, just go ahead and save the file. Now whenever you press super plus shift plus G, the Chrome web browser will launch instantly. Overall, Arch Linux with the all-new N4 dot files delivers an amazing and modern UI experience for Linux users. And that's all for this video on installing and customizing Hyperlint and QuickShell on Arch Linux. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. If you have any questions or queries, do post them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. This is been KSK Royal. I will see you in the next one.